Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting video. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. And today, we want to look at an interesting game, which is Student of My and I played together a couple of days ago. Um, uh, this student's name is Yash. We possibly looked at one of his other games previously. Yash has been getting quite good. He gained about 400 rating points in Blitz in the past um, couple of months. Um, his Blitz rating is now in the mid-1500s, and he's now on a quest to raise his Rapid rating. So great job to Yash, and let's look at this game. Um, the time control was 10 minutes. The idea for 10 minute games is for people to be able to actually take their time and not rush. E4, opponent plays D5. This is the Scandinavian defense. <clears throat> um, one of the main moves is Queen takes, but he decided to play knight 6 And the logic behind this is if Black takes with the Queen, Sometimes that queen gets chased around, so black says, I'm going to take this knight. The point is, white could defend, but that's not the greatest idea in the world. Um, so usually what white does is what we did in this game, which is d4. The point is, we are going to allow for the knight to take, and then we will take advantage of this knight being here by playing c4, which is something we want to do anyway. So black took, we played c4, and the logic is we have fairly nice control of the center. Okay. Um, black knight went back, knight f6, knight c3. Um, the logic behind the order of development is knight 3 is possible, but that might allow for this bishop to come. And it's not always something that we want to do because there is some pressure here. So, like, for example, knight 3 bishop g4, and we already have to be a little bit careful over here. So, um, the other point is at some point black wants to play e6, and ideally he wants to bring the bishop out before he plays e6. And so we don't want to give him this square just yet, so knight c3 is a useful move. We can always play this move later. Black plays b6, which is interesting, because... <clears throat> But it does give this bishop this diagonal. So now we play knight 3 because if black plays here, then b6 ends up being almost a waste of time. <clears throat> and if he plays here, obviously that's fine for black. But then this is not an issue of concern. Okay, black developed the bishop, which is reasonable. We play bishop e2 because we want to castle. Um, Bishop d3 is slightly more active. <clears throat> um, the advantage of bishop e2 is if, let's say, we cast on queen moves, our bishop still covers the knight, so if he takes us, we don't get to in our pawns. The disadvantage, of course, is the bishop would be more active on this diagonal. Okay, black plays e6. Makes sense. Getting ready to bring out the bishop. <clears throat> Castle. Nothing special here. Black got ready to castle, and we developed the piece. So we have a little bit more space. Our pawns control the center. We have two pretty good knights, two fairly good bishops. Um, but black is quite solid. Black castle. And now Yash came up with an idea, and the idea he came up with is knight, is knight b5. And the logic here. Yeah, so obviously we're talking this. Um, if it moves, well, we can do this anyway. So he could defend with the knight, but then the logic there is his knight is not very good. And he can't easily drive us away from here, because if he does something like this later, let's say he brings out the knight, and then we do something, and then he plays c6, um, the knight will leave, but then his bishop is kind of blocked. So so this seems like a reasonable idea. And black plays bishop d6, but now we just take the bishop. <clears throat> he takes back, and now we argue that we have two bishops. 
which gives us a long-term advantage, especially this guy now does not have a counterpart. So that gives us a long-term advantage. For the time being, there is no rush. We brought in our rook. It's more active on e1. He developed his knight. Makes perfect sense. Developing all of his pieces. Rook c1. Um, <clears throat> he brings in another one of his pieces, and there is no rush. Our pieces are pretty good. So we solidify our position. Just support this pawn. We have a pawn chain. We have a little bit more space. And we are waiting to see what black does. And black should probably just keep improving. Maybe move the queen up, connect the rooks, something like this. Black is knight h5, which, okay, of course it attacks the bishop. And now you don't want to play move like this, because remember, we have the two bishops. So we don't want to give that advantage back. And this knight on the side of the board does not make a lot of sense. So we played bishop e3 because this bishop is still pretty good. He controls this diagonal. He supports this square. And this knight, he's not doing too much. And black's next move is even more weird. He plays pawn f6. Um, I mean, he is trying to do something over here, but the downside is this knight um it's getting close it's getting very 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 close to running out of squares um so um for example already um we might um we might consider <clears throat> we might consider doing something um doing something like one g4 for example um so, um, uh, this is just not, not the greatest move in the world. Yash came up with another interesting idea. So play, we, uh, we play pawn d5, and the logic behind pawn d5 is, so for the time being, we're attacking the knight. Um, if he takes, we take with the queen, and we have pressure on these two guys. Um, in the game, black moves the knight to b4. And <clears throat> Yash came up with, with the idea of pawn a3, attacking this knight again. After the knight moves away, white has a very simple move, which creates a double threat. And um, the move, I'm going to pause for a second and let you find it. <clears throat> and the move is knight d4. Um, it not only does it threaten this, but also it hits those two guys. It hits the knight with those two guys. And black actually resigns because he cannot deal with all the threats. And by the this is instructive. A lot of people in this position would have just taken the spawn, and of course it's a reasonable move. But the idea is when you have a good move, um, as usual, take a couple of extra seconds, see if you find a better one. And the other lesson is, um, the, less, the other lesson to take away from this game is when you have a position um, where you're better, you have more space, you don't need to rush. Like a position like this, you don't need to do anything crazy, you don't need to attack, just improve, bring in all your pieces. Solidify your center, and then maybe improve it a bit. You don't need to necessarily do something crazy. And one of threats, like moves like knight h5, unless you actually make sure that you can trade that knight for the bishop, a lot of the time they're not very good. If you put your knight on the side of the board, make sure that he can make his way out, because this combination of knight h5 with pawn f6 just makes no sense. Um, Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, great job to Yach. Um, his improvement is quite impressive. Um, keep it up, keep getting even better. And to everyone who watched this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back soon. Thank you.